In this video, I'm going to run you through how to make a Smash PR image, themed after the game Among Us. And with this information, you'll be able to make the best Smash PRs ever. Which begs the question, what the heck is a Smash PR image anyway? Super Smash Brothers, or Smash for short, is a video game series about hairy Italian men and a platoon of anime boys punching Pikachu in the kidneys. A dedicated community of highly skilled Smash players compete in fan-operated tournament-style events. This is commonly known as playing competitively. It's also known as enjoying the game enough to put up with that guy that hasn't showered since the Emoji Movie came out. Come on, Jeff, we can smell you from the other end of the building! Every few months, the world's many local Smash communities publish lists of their top-ranking players. These are called PRs, which stands for... Pickle Rick! Paul Rudd! Power Rankings! But there's a tradition in the Smash community of getting inventive with these PR reveals. An artist will often be commissioned to create a themed illustration, rather than just a list. Not only is this unique to the Super Smash Bros. scene, you think the CSGO people are that creative? <laughs> But PR images that people think look cool are more likely to be shared around, which helps to raise the profile of that image's local Smash community. So I'm going to show you how to make Smash PRs that are epic, lit, and or fire. Whether you want to make one yourself, know the best thing to commission for your Smash community, or are just curious to know how it's done, I'm your guy. Here are some testimonials from satisfied viewers. Best PR image, hands down. This is the greatest graphic ever. Sickest PR image ever. Best PR PR image ever. This is the best PR graphic. This is graphic. godlike. God PR graphic. This is the best PR image. Oh, this is the best thing I've ever seen. This is a PR oh, graphic. Is Mike is this is beautiful PR. Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley. It's the Harry Gold Show. With your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. The first step to making the best Smash PR image ever is to choose a theme for your illustration. There have been high quality graphics made to look like all sorts of things, from fashion magazines, to supermarket catalogues, to whatever this is. But I personally recommend sticking to the subject of video games. These will strike a chord with the motley flock of enthusiasts who comprise your intended audience more than anything else, with the possible exceptions of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and Oreos. When choosing a video game to base a PR around, I always go for topicality. What is XQC playing right this second. <laughs> For one thing, this maximizes impact in the moment. People are swept up in something new and your PR image ties into existing excitement. Flappy Bird and Smash in one image? Shut up and take my money! But also, PR images are transient by nature. They're a snapshot of a specific moment in time. By the next PR image, the rankings may have completely rearranged. It's rather like a time capsule. And one day, we can all look back on it and say, hey, why don't I leave my walker? Anyway, the latest hotness in the world of gaming has been Among Us. Knowing my luck, it'll have already gone the way of Fall Guys by the time this video comes out. Cringe, bro. But even if it is already a dead meme by the time you're seeing this, I'll still be using Among Us as the theme for today's sample PR image, as it still should be pretty fresh in everyone's minds. That's the 10,000 IQ play right there. Once you've got a game in mind, there are some criteria to check before starting the illustration. The aim here is to depict Smash characters in the style of your chosen theme. Figuring out how to combine these successfully while maintaining the recognizability of both is a challenge and works a little differently for every style. Fitting King K rule into the circular and nasally challenged Game Grumps art style, for instance, is a much tighter squeeze than making him into a Mario Maker sprite or a Gigantamax Pokemon. For everything you change, something needs to stay the same. It's Newton's well-documented third law of dope fan art. But this does mean you must make sure the style is something your artist can handle. One might have chosen Fall Guys as a recent topic, even though interest in that suddenly dropped off like the guy coming last in Seesaw, but 3D is not something I can do, and I'm not personally satisfied unless I believe I can match the original style pretty much one to one. So for me, Fall Guys is eliminated. 3D games are not necessarily all off-limits for an anal-retentive 2D artist like myself. There are some things that can be replicated quite effectively, like Untitled Goose Game's flat art style, or the silhouettes in the Ridley reveal. Furthermore, plenty of 3D games have 2D artwork in them, be it the logo for Pokemon Sword and Shield, the apps in Animal Crossing, 
or the mascots from this Fallout 76 PR, which we abandoned due to the sheer magnitude of that game's popularity. People loved it so much we dropped the idea out of reverence. True story. In the case of Among Us, the characters already have customizable costumes in-game. This will be the basis for our character designs. So rather than depicting Smash characters in the Among Us art style directly, especially as I can't quite figure out what that is, the characters don't really have faces and all look exactly the same, but we'll be setting up the Smash characters as if they were Among Us costumes. The next step is to find an image from or related to your chosen game to base the PR upon. This can be anything. The game's cover, the menu, the developer's Tinder profile, whatever you like. There are just two requirements. One is that it's recognisable, so that people will know what you're referencing even after you've filled it with characters that don't necessarily belong, like Mario and Pac-Man and... Chibi Robo? Hint hint, Sakurai, if you're watching. I mean seriously, you include Piranha Plant, but not Chibi Robo. We abandoned this Five Nights at Freddy's VR themed graphic, for example, because we decided that most of the audience probably won't know what the hell this is supposed to be. <laughs> Among Us has been pretty ubiquitous in the gaming sphere lately, so in terms of recognisability, we've got some latitude. You see the Among Us icon anywhere the game is being played and the menu and the lobby are also good recognisable images, but that can all go out the airlock. For this example, I'll be using the victory screen. The second requirement for the choice of scene is that the image you choose must support multiple characters. In an Undertale battle, for example, there are multiple characters lined up, so even though we have to take some artistic liberties to fit everyone in, the scene remains recognisable. Our Among Us sample image features a whole row of characters, quite ideal for doubling as a list. It even comes pretty close to the number of players we need for our graphic, the top 10 people plus one honourable mention. In fact, I chose this over the very similar crewmate slash imposter screen because the exaggerated foreshortening focuses too much on the centre crewmate. Why would 6th place draw all of that attention to himself? Not gonna lie, that's kinda sus. Text is also a necessary part of the PR, so a theme with built-in space for it, like this abandoned Doki Doki Literature Club theme, for instance, is quite ideal. Finding room for the title is not usually an issue. Even if you can't squeeze it in anywhere, you can always expand the image to make space. But you do have to account for a place to fit the names of the players, including that one guy who inevitably has a name three times as long as everyone else's. <sighs> The best place to start a PR is with the layout. It saves a lot of headaches if you figure out where all of your text is going to be first, instead of finding out it doesn't fit after it's too late, and then going to jail for drop kicking an old lady in a fit of rage. It's not worth it. In our sample, we're taking the title from the victory screen. A little research tells me this font is called VCR OSD Mono. A little more research tells me that Among Us was made by the same guy that created the Henry Stickman games. The more you know. For authenticity's sake, we'll also recreate the quit and play again signs, but we'll be altering the text to give other important information, like this list's panellists and whoever the unbelievably talented artist is. I don't know who they are, but they're super talented. You should probably go subscribe to their channel and follow them on Twitter and Instagram via the links in the description. Whoever they are, I don't know. We can work out our layout by using a placeholder sketch of a crewmate and recreating the spotlight. When you make a PR, remember that it's fine to alter the layout from the source image if it will make things fit better. Just remember what Sir Isaac Newton said about fan art and the potential for dopeness therein, and you will be fine. We'll label our crewmates, i.e. the ranking players, with the Among Us screen name font, which I believe is Ariel. It has all the excitement of Helvetica, but with the professional gravitas of Joker Man. Now we're on to the actual characters. I've got a high-res image of the crewmate, which I'm going to copy as the basis, and I'm keeping all of the colours and shades on separate layers so they can be changed for each design. Now here comes the fun part.
my friends, is a finished PR. Now you have the knowledge and skills to make the best one ever. Bestness of your PR and aberration therein not guaranteed. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and the first three people to guess who it is in the comments get a shout out when I tell you the answer in the next episode. If your guess last time was that living proof of the reptilian takeover, Mark Zuckerberg, you are absolutely correct. Odessa Phoenix swooped in and got there first. Bensel Schaffner zucked their way to second, and bringing up the rear was William Reardon Videos, landing third. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. Beneath a brow you could shelter a limo under, this subject's eyes are dark, deeply entrenched, and apparently in a long distance relationship with one another. Their nose is broad like that side of the proverbial barn which no one can ever hit, and looms vulture-like over an exceedingly diminutive mouth, practically eclipsing it. Optometrists use this mouth on eye charts, it's so small. Their ears are somewhat reminiscent of a pair of wind-up keys, and their hair is so curly and greasy it might just wind up on the menu at Arby's. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. And maybe if you liked the video, share it with your pals. Sharing is caring, you know. This has been The Harry Gold Show. So until next time, stay safe and God bless.